Mahalo Monday it is. Good morning, good morning, good morning and uh, welcome to the show. It is absolutely wonderful to have you along with us. As always on Mahalo Monday, there she is. Thank you, Google. Thank you, thank you. Rodez, yeah, everybody. Morning. <laughs> good morning, Google. And how was your father's and happy Father's Day to you and all thank the daddies you. out there? Yes, to all the dads. It was brilliant. Thank you oh, for asking. I got lovely. what I always wanted. <laughs> and what was that, Google? The TV remote. <laughs> I got it. I'm a simple man. That's all I wanted was just the remote. Uh, Nothing glad, else. I'm glad. Nothing else. And I hid uh, it. I'm glad. In fact, I brought it here with me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. <laughs> yeah, so we're really looking forward to today's show. And as Rona said, yes, happy Father's Day to everybody. We hope uh, you, you absolutely got spoiled. And really just the true meaning of it. But with that being said, June is, of course, Youth Month, as we know. And uh, for this whole month so far, here in Mahala Monday, we've, we've spoken about uh, youth and uh, all these amazing things that the youth can get involved oh, yeah. in oh, yeah. and, and, and brilliant prog programs. And, and today's not different, but let me just remind you, it's an interactive show. This is not our show, it's your show. So uh, we're live on YouTube and on Facebook, and of course the details at the bottom of your screen, as we like to say, at Nikkei Productions, so you can really get in touch with us. That's right, and it's all about our youth. Mm. And today we've got a very interesting speaker as well, and you know what, it's like we said uh, with our ad, it's about sports. It is about mm. sports. And let me, before we actually introduce our speaker and really just give you all the, the nuts and bolts of what it is, I just enjoy talking to her off air. Almost definitely. So I'm not really looking to the show. Yeah, I was really <laughs> looking forward. Now I'm like doubly, doubly. Doubly excited. Doubly, doubly. Yeah. But, but it, is, it is a real thing. So uh, we, we're in COVID times, so of course, levels that get adjusted mm. now. The levels oh, yeah. have changed as well. And as we know, not just the challenges that as COVID has brought about for society, but the youth, oh, yeah. teenagers, because they already have huge amount of challenges. challenges. Then you add resources or lack of, lack re of resources, resources yeah. opportunity, the choices that are available, yeah. and all of a sudden, we, we sit with serious issues. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And you know what What COVID had brought around as well, like you're saying, social issues and that, where people has been isolated, our, our youth has been isolated. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the impact of that, uh, it's scary, because how that mentally affected a lot of adults. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how this is affecting our youth? That's actually got so many challenges, besides the fact of becoming an adolescent, having to deal with peer pressure, and actually just being isolated or being alone and not going to school. Yeah, you know, you know what? and. You, when, when you say it that sure. way, the immediate thing for me as Dougal is to do and look at my, and I'm still youth, <laughs> let's just be very honest there, uh, I'm still youth, um, I, I got to look at my own youth and, and, and considering the topic today, I played every sport, mm. I, I was super involved in, in community stuff, I really, I had options and choices, I was one of the lucky ones. Oh, you're so fortunate. But, but do we all have that? And that is what we kind of try and provide for youngsters that today right, because it's based right. on your own lived experience. Own lived experience. So uh, we all know these challenges. These challenges are real. Oh, yeah. And uh, you might have noticed something in your community. And for that reason, we'd just like to point out that this is, of course, your platform. So let's hear. Maybe you've got a suggestion. Maybe you've got questions because we're going to introduce you a very special person in a few moments. And Nikkei Productions and how you get in touch with us, of course, uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. We look forward to your questions questions and comments and then of course to everybody listening on clubhouse what's up <laughs> yes that's right yeah yeah Dougal just coming back to that you mm. know the challenges of youth I mean when I was back in the in school as well she's also youth I'm also youth by the way don't look at the it's not gray it's called um, silver streaks yeah. and <laughs> and just looking back as well you know when it came to sports days and obviously coming from a school as well where uh, we, we didn't have a lot of um, external activities outside our school. Be, yeah. I grew up basically in Stramwintain and there wasn't external activities outside so it was basically just your school activity at school and a lot of kids at the end of the day financially would rather duck or hide when it comes to sports days because obviously parents had to buy uniforms, yeah. they had to buy the PT shorts or they had to buy the shorts or the top you know, so that was also a challenge because they would rather go hide where they could have been brilliant, obviously, 
um, sporting people, but because financially one of the things would be finances. You yeah. know? Mommy needs to go buy shorts. Imagine during COVID now, having to be able it's to difficult. not have a job maybe or have half your salary and then still having to suit your kids mm -hmm. and having that pressure as well. But we're going to speak to an expert on, you know, our youth out there and what she's done in this COVID yeah. times. And you know, <laughs> and the stuff we're highlighting yeah. is obviously these are just some of the issues. We're just some speaking from our, our own perspectives oh, here. Yeah. But um, I'm sure you've experienced different issues. But it comes down to having options. options. Having choices. Having yeah. options. And more more specifically, who are we talking to today? They've taken all of that and oh, a lot yes. more, and they sort of aligned it where you do this, you kind of get skills, man. Oh, yeah. But oh, you yeah. have a jaw. Yeah. This is all liquor. It is fantastic. So, joining us today, then, yeah, on Mahala Monday, on this Monday, the 21st of June, which is a nice date to know as well, mm -hmm. is uh, Ali Dixon. And uh, she will be joining us. So, Ali, from all of us here and everybody at Mahala Monday, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Hello, good morning. I'm having a jaw. I always have a jaw. So, <laughs> I'm hanging out with you, and this is called work. So, yay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a win-win. <laughs> I like what you say. The only person who really works here is Rhoda. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, Ellie, Play Sports for Life. That, that is the organization you're with. There's game changers, and we're going to really get stuck into the, all, of, all this. of this. But uh, look quickly, uh, Ellie Dixon, what, what do you do? Where, where do you come from? How long have you been doing this? Tell, just two seconds. Tell us quickly a little bit about yourself. Yo, two seconds is a limited time for me, eh? I like to talk a lot. Um, so I'm a chica that grew up on the Cape Flats. I lived between Mitchell's Flay and Blue Downs. Halfway through my high school career, I went um, to the Settlers High in Belleville. Okay. I then moved into the Burbs. I worked at a hotel for 18 years of my life. And wow. then I went to events and tourism. And I created amazing events with amazing people for seven years. And then COVID hit and I went, OMG, what now? So I got involved in community work. Um, I needed to keep myself busy. Uh, generally, I was on a, on a plane 46, 46 to 52 flights a year, and then it all no. came to an end. Yeah. So I got involved in the community. I hooked up with Play Sport for Life in Maitland, um, and they operate mainly in Kensington and Factorton. And we then started helping the community with humanitarian relief. So really food kitchens, um, helping with food parcels, making sure that people were eating last year. Mm. Um, towards the end of that, the, the founder of Play Sport for Life then asked me to join. He wanted to move out of the organization operationally. And because events were just not going to come back like we knew it, mm. it was the perfect thing for me. So yeah. that's how I moved into the organization. Wow. Okay. All right. So yeah, so uh, all of a sudden, so you, I mean, you were a very busy person, mm. and, uh, and and then COVID is there, as you said, and uh, you joined a uh, play sports for life. But obviously, a person doesn't just join an organization like that if they don't sort of manifest all those passions that really makes them so effective as it does you. So, uh, and I mean, we can already see that in the first two seconds that you spoke. <laughs> You're very <laughs> passionate about it. So, so play sports for life. So you you mentioned they work in certain areas. Areas. And, and, and of course, what are these areas that they work in? Okay, so currently working in Kensington, Maitland and Factorton. Mm -hmm. um, so prior to COVID, Play Sport for Life were pushing, putting coach, coaches into the different schools. Um, so the schools in the area don't have phys ed like we knew it back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. So they have ALO, which is the, uh, the part of the curriculum. And... Um, but the other curriculum, there's the theory and then there's also the physical. And so there was no capacity to have kind of PE teachers and all of that. So mm. we then used to get interns, international interns, and then okay. also local interns, and we put them into, into the schools. And they would then sort out the physical part of the ALO curriculum in the schools. Obviously with COVID, schools were closed, so there were no kids and so there were no interns. And so kids wow. were just staying at home. And, um, and then we quickly had to reinvent what it is that we were going to do. And that's how 
Game Changers was born. Okay. okay. So, yeah. yeah, so the Sports for Life, just looking at that, I just wanted to come back a bit on um, the Play Sports for Life at schools. So what did you guys introduce at school? Say if you go to a school where they actually don't have the facilities, like, uh, you know, uh, do you guys bring the facilities? What do you guys do when you actually come on school? What, do, what is the main um, reason well, or what do you guys do? Because in schools, you're not allowed to just go into a school. So the yeah. coaches would, would then team up with the main life orientation teacher. Okay. And so whatever they were learning in life orientation that day, we would then tailor the sport to it. So when you're looking at movement and things, if they were doing, I don't know, something around balance, Mm -hmm. We would, like life balance as an example, we would then bring in a coach that would do activities that had something to do with balance. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a balance beam, maybe it's balancing a ball, various okay. things. So it wasn't specific sporting codes, okay. although they are all, they're all proficient in baseball, soccer, hockey, most of our coaches have played most of the sporting codes. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily only use specific sporting codes because some kids are not team players. They don't want to do sport, mm -hmm. um, but they need to do some sort of movement so we make it fun. Yeah. So as an example, soccer. Mm. You don't just have to play normal soccer. You can play crab soccer. And I mean, that's a hoot because you are on your hands and your feet. The same time when you're trying to score goals. What yeah. was that? Crab soccer. Crab soccer, yeah. Oh my word, that's the first time I heard of this. You probably know about no, this because you're do. sporty. Yeah, because that's wow. how I actually play soccer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I'm a bit upset that people didn't realize I invented the game. But <laughs> <laughs> and, and these coaches, the, the, or the, these people, and they come from all over. Yeah, so we, we've had interns from... Denmark, Finland, Belgium, and then also locally, you yeah. know, some of the, 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 the um, what are they called, the, the colleges like ETA, Yes. they yeah. also have interns, uh, CPUT, the sports management guys, they also come through to wow. us and they volunteer, um, so really from all over, and not only, not only sports people, but physiotherapists, occupational therapists, um, and they kind of help assist the kids as well. So yeah. they get their practical hours in. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. So ha having a look at that, that is what uh, Play Sports for Life does. Then COVID comes, as you say. All of a sudden, we, we mm. it's, mm. it's lockdowns, it's thing. And this is what spawned Game Changers. Yes. So, so COVID arrived. Um, and then there were these community action networks that, that um, popped up everywhere. Um, and we then hooked up with two of them and we started providing humanitarian relief. So the food and the soup kitchens, yes. um, we made sure that the kids that we normally would look after from a physical aspect in schools, we were now taking care of them and their families um, from a food aspect. So. Mm. Mm. That went really well. We had, I don't know, I think around about 10 kitchens that were feeding like 1,500 people per day. Wow, sure. And what that then gave us was it allowed us to connect directly with the community. So we were able to have conversations <laughs> with moms and dads now. Previously, we were only speaking mm. to the kids. Mm. Oh, yeah. And from that, the Game Changers was born because one of the moms said to us the one day, she's like, you're sorting out our tummies now, but... Um, our kids are starting to stand on the corners. They're bored. Oh. Mm. They don't know what to do with themselves. School wow. is closed and they're being enticed into kind of unsavory things, games, mm. drugs, that kind of stuff. And then I said, okay, we'll come up with something. And that was late last year. And that's how Game Changers was born. It was born to create an amazing culture that kids could belong to where they could find connection in a safe space. Mm. And the sporting part is we use sport as the draw card. Yeah. So wow. no child is going to come to a skills development workshop where we do mentoring. They're going to go, really? I'm a teenager. What are you thinking? 
You yeah. cannot be advertising that to me. Yeah. Um, and so we had to do it differently. And we yeah. did it going, hey, come and have fun with us. Come and have fun on a Friday. You're going to meet cool people. There's going to be music. There's going to be food. And listen, music, food, and sports. Yeah. <laughs> it's a winner. They were there, like a bear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how Game Changers was born, yeah. And and what what is what, and what is the focus of game changers? Because you 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 say there you you said that it is to create uh, an amazing culture, yeah. and of course uh, I would imagine with that now a stand up citizen. And yes. this wasn't just to occupy people's time, obviously. Yeah. Which we find is a lot of what programs do. They try and occupy people's time. So we said no. You first need to get to know yourself, so there's going to be some sort of personal development. So this is all the adults speaking in the background. Mm. You need to know who you are. So we did personal development. Then we need to know how you fit into the community. And currently we're doing community, um, we're doing sport and peace in the community. And then the third part of the game changes is really around transferring skill, which is the mm. most important part, I think. Um, mm. You know, not everybody's going to get a degree. Oh, yeah. And even if you do have one, you may still not be able to get a job. Mm. And so what we're saying is, how about we transfer skills practically and creatively to the kids? Wow. Um, so that they can monetize it. Mm. Uh, so to give you a s small example, a couple of weeks ago, we had a mini athletics day for... Uh, one of the educare centers that were on the brink of closing and so we were raising funds and we used uh, some of the kids that have come through game changers they ran the sporting element and then we showed them how to quickly make some bucks on the day wow. and they then started selling pancakes yeah. and they were like wow this is amazing like we can make money out of nothing yeah. um, and so really that's what we want to expose them to and and to be able to do that, we need a network and we need opportunity and we need to show them different things. Mm. Um, because sometimes all you know is what you know. And okay. when you're sitting in a situation in our poorer communities where parents are only trying to survive, they're trying to put the next meal on the table. Mm. They don't have the time or the luxury of going, oh, let me enroll my son or daughter into yes. ballet or this mm. or that, you know? So we try and create those, we try and open their minds and show them that there's a lot out yeah. there that they can be part of. Do, do, oh, my word, do, yeah. do you know what, Ellie, as you say that, I'm, I'm, and um, sure. it's almost, I don't want to play devil's advocate, but it is a case that normally when, when there's a bit of a, a, a travesty, and in this instance, uh, COVID, there's, mm. there's always great opportunity always comes from something when you always have your back to the wall. Oh. That, that is almost uh, oh, yeah. a guarantee. But the kids that came now to these programs, and my assumption is you had it on a Friday night would, uh, or late afternoon, would, would, would come around and they were doing this. They, they just came purely just to have fun. And then while they in it, they, you know, like you said now, now all of a sudden we're talking about skills development oh, and yeah. try and monetize something and then have a transferable skills. When you leave this, you kind of go, oh, well, I've got this, this, and this, and the other. And how long is this program? So we run it on a six week block. Six okay. Mm -hmm. So what we do is, so the first six weeks is personal development. Um, and we have all these conversations and we bring in an amazing facilitator and these kids get to ask questions that they're scared to either ask their teachers or their parents. Mm -hmm. um, so we put young male mentors in, we, we were busy with boys, um, that can also have these conversations where boys can ask those really uncomfortable yeah. um, questions that dads sometimes don't know how to answer. Um, and then we, then we break for a bit because there's exams and all sorts of things. And then we run another six weeks. Um, and currently we're busy with sport and community because now you know who you are. Yeah. Um, so now you can check on how you fit into your community. And then, the, then we do a camp. So I'm taking some of them on a camp in July. And there they'll be learning 
how to become mentors oh. so that we create multipliers in the community because oh. I'm not going to be there forever. Mm. And let's face it, according to them, I'm super old. I don't feel like I'm old, but I'm <laughs> super old. So we need them to bring their peers. Yeah. So that's what the camp is about. Yeah. And then there'll be another six weeks where they will learn, they will hook up with some really awesome young men um, that are creatives that can teach them around content creation, photography, videography, things that are appropriate for today's um, world. You know, back in the day we had to learn Excel. Now you need to learn how do you create content on TikTok and Instagram (laughs) and all of that. So we bring those guys in (laughs) and and we transfer those skills practically. And then after that, we again, we create events around what we do. So, as an example, we will manage golf days for people and we'll bring our game changers into those golf days and they'll assist us. And then they're getting practical on the job experience yeah. as well. Yeah, for, yeah. For, yeah and, and I, I like that. I like mm-hmm. all of that because it, there's really that sort of interaction, you know what I mean? Oh, you yeah. get to learn how to work with people. I like that, that sort of self-development. You, you, you're you pushing leaders through all of this. All and this. then there's the transfer of skills and then there's that sort of plow back element, if Into I can call community. it that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where they become a mentor or, you know, or try and just keep it going, keep That's it fine. going. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, I like all of that. I like, And we're going to talk more about it quite in detail, but I just remind you, of course, uh, we look forward to your comments and questions as well, and you can uh, send those through to us at Nikkei Productions uh, on YouTube and on Facebook. And you got somebody on Clubhouse. That's right. We've got Hubert on Clubhouse. Hubert, welcome to Mahala Monday. Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning, everybody. And once again, great show. Thank you, I, Hubert. I've, I've got a statement and a question. Uh, I've got a question and a statement. Um, I, I love the, and I'm excited about what I'm listening to and hearing. But don't you find that sport doesn't only, when you combine sport with all the elements that you that you have in this um, uh, initiative of yours, you don't. You always find that sport doesn't only build character; it actually reveals character. Do you find that that's happening within um, the the group of youngsters that you mentor? Yes, we do. So some people are just natural born leaders. Um, and, and, and what we find is that sometimes kids don't know what what to do with that because they don't know what it is. And so we try and build a support network around those ones that are natural born leaders. And mm. those that we see mm. potential, we also try and uh, build a support network around so that they can be the best people that they can be. Um, and I think that's mm. what it's about. It's not about being somebody else out there. It's about being who you are, true to yourself, and and just getting people to bring that out. Um, a lot of kids don't necessarily have that. They don't have that support. Um, so yes, we do find that they are natural born leaders, and those those kids will they put up their hands very quickly to say, "I want more. I want more." And that's mm. how this program has sort of developed started off as one thing and now we're just going along the journey you know the the, the destination changes all the time mm. and we go with it because that's what mm. the kids need and so we also need to keep up with what they need and i almost want to say stop speaking at them mm. um because when you're dealing with youth it's important that the youth is in the room they need to tell us what they need mm. as well mm. so yeah wow. i hope that answers absolutely your question. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Do you have any other questions, Hubert? Uh, I've got a lot, but I'd, I'd rather want to listen. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm finding it so exciting listening to, to, to her speak. That's all. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she does excite one. <laughs> Hubert, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, for, thank for, you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank I, you. Cheers, man. Bye. I absolutely love that question. And, and on your answer there to, to Hubert, Ali, uh, you, you speak about the flexibility of of uh, of the programs and and do you find is that what makes these programs so successful and especially with game changers because you yourself said it now you know you've got to have the youth in the in the room as well mm-hmm. that flexibility because the goalposts change all the time and as you go on that journey you discover other things that you might have not not thought of when you initially started but uh, as the program goes on you know it constantly expands and you're constantly mm-hmm. eating different things yeah, you know, I mean, there's so much stuff. I was going to say. Um, I, th- I think my, like my own experience in life was um, 
we kind of grew up in these boxes mm. and you kind of stayed in your lane kind of thing and when you were a child you were seen you were not heard yeah, yeah. and I think um I think that's one thing I learned I have three kids of my own as well and I mean they they just tell me how it is it's like mm. bomb you can't do it like that no. you think it's cool it's not cool <laughs> and and I think that's what our youth need they need us to listen a little bit more yes and they need us to take guidance from them. You know, when you're in the corporate environment, um, you have this managing up and managing down. In our home, sometimes we think we can only manage down. Mm, mm. And that is why you get kids that they, they zip it. They then go, well, I'm not going to say anything. Mm. And so we really want to create that space where they come and they go, coach, mm. we think this is going to be a good idea. And we kind of go, okay, let's try it. And if it, if it works, amazing, let's build on it. If it doesn't work, let's try something else. Yeah. So we're removing the judgment from what people are wanting to do and just allowing people to just be the best that they can be. Yeah. I mentioned to you guys earlier on, I started ballet. <laughs> oh, woo! <laughs> everybody's like, OMG! Oh, and I was a big girl. And everybody told me, you're too big, you can't do ballet, you can't do this, you can't do that. And now I'm at the point of my life where it's, mm, actually I can do anything that there I want go. to do. Yeah. You may not like it, but I am going to have a jaw because there the dash between when I was born and the uh. end of my life is, is what I want to do. I want to make, I just want to have a lick of time. Uh. <laughs> So, yeah, so we move. We move with the kids you, as they go. You make me very excited. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You, you highlighted my biggest fear. It's like I look at life and I look at my life journey. You know what I mean? I, I don't have any regrets. Uh, I've got to be honest with you. Absolutely yeah. no regrets. But I don't want to ever be in a situation where I go, if only I did. Exactly. You know what I mean? And, and this and this is, is this is what it's about. So. Yes, I uh, Yeah, just a quick one. I think probably just getting back to the challenges. Sorry, Dougal. Mm. And I just wanted to touch on this a bit. And I, I'm also speaking a bit now from coming from the generation, from the older generation, and coming to the age where we're at now, we have to raise the youth and our future. Um, the challenges, and this is what I wanted to ask you about the challenges which is your social media which is like the new norm we didn't have those challenges back in the day because we didn't have cell phones we didn't have these social networks and social you know where a lot of the bullying and a lot of things is happening as well how do you find this now especially you talking now about us growing up in these boxes and I mean, it is quite, uh, for me, it's always like a humongous step. It's like stepping on the moon, like where they're talking the first step on the moon, you know, like it's a big challenge for our generation to kind of deal with this. How are you guys challenging this within the youth that we're obviously dealing with that social networking is like WhatsApp chatting. They don't talk to each other. They'll sit next to each other. I know of them. Mm. I kind of know of a mother, which is a generation before me. And I'm not old. Silver streaks. Youth boss. Silver streaks is youth that basically sat next to each other. Mommy was on the phone and the daughter was sitting next to And this was a conversation with the two of them are talking, but they're not talking. And this is what you guys are sitting with. How are you dealing with these challenges of communicating? So, so I am 24 seven on a WhatsApp group actually with, yeah. um, with the game changers. Uh, we've got all of them and they're allowed to ask questions. Um, these boundaries that we put around the social media. Okay. So. Don't send me a message after eight o'clock unless I need to go and rescue you from something. Yeah. Um, you kind of you can message me after eight in the morning. Um, so so we do chat to them on WhatsApp. Mm. When we're running our programs, there's no cell phones allowed okay. because we're having conversations. Brilliant. So we do not want to see your cell phone if you mm. need to be on your cell phone. And we very we we. We don't judge and we don't mm -hmm. shout and scream at the kids, but we'll yeah. say, guys, if, if that's what you want to be doing right now, that's your right. Mm. But if you're going to be interfering with the rest, then go do it outside. We yeah. don't mind. Off you go. You're going to mm. miss out, but yeah. off you go. Um, were you going to say something? Sorry? No. Did I miss no? Um, so so from a, from, we have to be in touch on social media, mm. but we create spaces where we just don't need social media. I mean, we keep them so busy that they don't, they don't need to be on social media mm. when they're with us. Oh, brilliant. Um, mm. And that's where they learn the communicating. They learn to, I go, use your words. Mm. <laughs> <So> <laughs> like, 
do use your words uh, because yeah they do find it difficult sometimes to to speak to you you know yeah, yeah. so they, they they normally they try with the lead in they'll go they'll whatsapp you so i had a situation last week not a situation something that came up a, a gentleman sent me a message a young gentleman at school um, and it was after eight and I don't, so I saw mm. it coming through and I parked it for a bit and next morning I opened it up and I, and it was gone. And so they have this knee jerk reaction or oh, um. maybe I shouldn't have asked it. Find him. I said, do you want to have a conversation? Mm. You sent me a message. I don't know what it was. What's the conversation? Um, and he said, I'm really struggling. I'm mm. struggling at school and I really need your help. Mm. I said, right, we're not doing this over social media. We're not doing this on the phone. You and I are going to meet on Friday at three o'clock. I'm going to have a conversation. Wow. We had a conversation and and it it, it warms my heart because we have created the safe space for him. Mm. Now giving him the help that he needs with some subjects that he's struggling with. Wow. And so, as a, again, as I say, the sport brought them, but yeah. the conversation hit mm. them. Communication. Um, Do you know what that is? That is, I mean, that wow. is that is a huge thing for somebody to have that amount of trust and and just wow. texted you in the first or WhatsApp you and then to actually yeah to open up because mm. th- th- this is what I think a lot of y- young people struggle with. You don't know always who it is that you can trust, trust. but once we've made a connection with anybody mm. and there is that trust i mean we we can we can take down mountains together and and this is the important thing so i i really just want to say well done i, I really like that okay. hearing that um because you touched on my biggest fear laryngitis that's when i <laughs> <laughs> laryngitis it's yeah i can't do anything <laughs> about it but, so the, the programs at game changes run for six weeks how many people are currently involved in the programs in terms of the youth um, so at the moment, we've got just over 40 youth involved. Mm. Um, and I'm quite excited because they're all between the ages of 15 and 19. Wow. Uh. So to capture that age group and to keep them coming back, mm. I mean, I think for me, that's just the most, you know, every week I go there, then I'm like, oh, are they all coming back? Are they going to be here? Yeah. And you see those faces and you go, yes, it's a yeah. winner. <laughs> because to keep, I know I've got a 15 year old and I've got a 12 year old and I know that how difficult it is to keep them engaged yeah, yeah. and wanting more for themselves mm. so but yeah so just over 40 and, and as I say and it runs on a six week block and then yeah. the next one maybe we'll have a little bit more if COVID allows allows um, yeah yeah, and, and we'll expand it onto different days. So let's see. And Ellie, you might, you might, you. I'm, I'm sure you were probably surprised by 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 a youngster that uh, joined the program. Where you know, we, where somebody walked in and you thought, okay, you know, this person's very shy, or this person's very out there, or, or somebody. And where you've seen that the program has sort of really developed, Hello. and just the social interaction with 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 like-minded people. Do you have any of those stories where you just saw somebody, oh, just really boom, or excel, or anything like that? Look, we've, um, so when we started, um, because the conversations were quite different to uh, what I'm assuming some of the, the, the young ones had at home, it was really open conversations around who am I, why do I exist, what is my mission, what do I want, what are the, what's the world's perception of who I am. Um, so we start off and we've got these, there were, there were 12 specific ones that we looked at. Um, and they were quiet and they didn't know how to answer anything and you kind of had to draw everything out of them. Mm. Listen, at the end of the six weeks, we hosted a golf day, um, a fundraising golf day, and our 12 boys stood up in front of, it was just under 100 men, Mm -hmm. and said to them, we are the leaders of the future. You guys, as dads, as uncles, as brothers, you need to step up. The conversations our coaches are having with us, you need to have with us. And I think, I mean, that was just amazing. Aidan Thomas was um, our MC that day and Yusuf Daniels. 
and they were asking these boys these questions. And these kids that came into a big hall at Shawco in Kensington that couldn't say boo or ba at the start of the program were standing there telling the men what they thought role models should be. Yeah. And so, yeah, so, so we have them. And those are the boys that have come back and they've multiplied. As I said, I, I want the multiplier yeah. effect. I want everybody <laughs> to have a lick it down. They brought the whole basketball team with them yeah. to join. Game changer second part. So, yeah, that's, we have those guys. We have those stories. Ah, beautiful. I'm loving beautiful, it. <laughs> beautiful. So, uh, COVID, obviously, uh, working and running the program within the COVID restrictions, that, that I would assume has made things Challenge, a little bit yeah. more challenging for you? It has, um, because as I say, a lot of what we do is interaction. Mm. We do have a wonderful space in Kensington um, at the Shawco Hall. And so it's, it's fairly big. It's got an inside and an outside. And so we are able to social distance. So we're still able to run our programs because we're still within the, the numbers that, that uh, we were given. Um, but, but what, again, that's created another opportunity the boys have learned how to do registration safely. So the, the lot that came through the first part of the program, they now are registration officers um, and they keep everybody socially distanced on the lines outside. They put up the branding, they do the registration, wow. the temperatures are checked, um, they seat everyone. Excellent. Uh, so yeah, we, we're working with COVID, but also again, it's another, it's another lesson for them mm. because oh, yeah. they can go and they can offer that service back to their schools they can offer it back to their sporting clubs yeah. um mm. so yeah so we try and bring out all those little those yeah. lessons in everything and and earlier you touched on uh, on 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 the pancakes you know making money out of you know nothing as we would say um uh, so having a look at how people have sort of applied their skills. And I mean, it, it has opened doors for them. Like, you know what I mean? Or just, because all you need is just to activate an interest. And, and, and this is what it's about. So not just is it something where you could like sort of monetize a skill, but also just activate an interest because now you've awakened oh, yeah. passion. And, and yeah. now, now the, 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 the bull is running, if you were. So, so one of the boys that, um, two of the boys that ran the pancake stand, as an example, mm. they, as I say, they were sports people, and that's how we got to know them. Um, but on the day of the little sports event that we had, they were like, we're doing pancakes. Coach, do you know I want to be a chef? Ah. I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that. I yeah. was like, well, there you go. There's an opportunity. Practice. Yeah. Um, is that the next sporting event, he's not going to be coaching the little ones. He's going to come up with something creative. He's going to either sell coffee and go and do a barista course so that he can do it properly. Yeah. Or he's going to sell the pancakes or he's going to make a burrowbos roll. But it's all about just igniting those passions in them yeah. so that they can see that there's a big world out there. And that's, yeah, you may not have been a ballerina when you were little, but you can't be one now that you're big. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> I just quickly want to go to one of the comments uh, we have uh, from uh, Jabbar, who says, uh, always on a Monday. This program just makes me smile. So uh, listening to you, Jabbar is smiling from ear to ear. So thank you, Jabbar, for watching. Yes, uh, Ali, you certainly are making us all smile from ear to ear. Definitely. But I want to ask you, uh, people who's not involved in this program, I yeah. mean, obviously, with a program like this, uh, and, and you want to reach the whole planet because oh, I yes. know that's what you want to do. Uh, well, I, I, I say so. You know, because, I mean, just imagine the, 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 the caliber of individual we're sitting with. So w what is there that you would say just to moms and dads and people just starting off families and even the older generation, the grandparents' generation, all of that, what is there that you would just, would want to say to them to like, listen, this is these are the things we, we need to start having the conversations with, with, especially with the youth. What is there that we can do in our homes to be the catalyst for this? Yeah, no, no, I think, you know, it's... Um as, as older people and as a mom with three kids, I come with all my own stuff. Mm. Um, and what I've learned through this process is to put my stuff aside and to actually have a conversation and have the hard conversation that feels especially difficult to me. Because if it's feeling especially difficult to me, I know that it's going to be an important one for my kids. Mm. Mm. 
you know, we can have we can have as many resources and a, and a lot of parents, so you, you kind of got, you got the two sides of the camp. You either have a lot of money mm-hmm. and an empty heart, or you have a lot of heart and an empty wallet. Um, and what I want to say is that in every community, there's challenges, there's different challenges, mm-hmm. but that doesn't have to stay a challenge. You, if you start, you just open up a small little five minutes with your, with your team, have a small conversation with them. You'll see, you'll see quickly how much you can grow that. So I just want to say to everyone, be open. Just don't be judgerach. Because that's, you know, don't come with your opinion. <laughs> just don't. Um, let them speak. You know, sometimes we ask them a question. Yeah. Like we preempted with an answer already. Sorry. And so they kind of go, well, you, you know what you want anyway. So why are yeah. you asking me? Mm, you know that yeah. thing that they do. Mm, yeah. that thing. Um, and, and my kids say that to me all the time. Mom, just don't be judge her. If you oh, I hear that all the time. Then expect an answer, <laughs> and then you know deal with the answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, at, I must say that's a very common word. My kids as well, mommy, don't be judge her. And I'm like, you know, so, so it's a common thing I see. <laughs> I love that. You know, that's exactly it. And I mean, this is a conversation, you know, my husband and myself always have also. And I always say, you know what? There is today, really, sometimes there is no book actually how to raise a kid. Because, you know, your challenges differ every time the new generation comes along. You can't, I can't do what my parents necessarily did back in the day. Because the challenges are different today. The, you know, so I fully understand where this judge comes from. (laughs) Got to challenge the stereotypes, you know. Um, yeah. my, my middle child, she's like, yes, see, she's that middle child. <laughs> and he challenged me on certain things that the older generation um, was speaking about in terms of, of, of body, of what is being healthy, what mm. does it mean if you to fat or to thin or yeah. cheap. And I had to go and I had to show up for her. And oh, I had yeah. to go and have those conversations oh, with yeah. people around me. I mean, I had to swallow hard because the aunties were not going to love me. <laughs> they were like, <laughs> dick and, you know? Good, good, yeah. um, but I had to show up for my daughter to go, actually, that's not okay. You cannot speak about people's weight like that. You but, cannot, yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, we just need to be open. Brilliant. Individuals. We're not here for a long time, so we need to be here for a lick of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. dash in between. <laughs> no, and, 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 and that is it, that is it, because we pe- people are being judged of just unnecessarily <laughs> at times. <laughs> uh, so, Ali, basically, obviously, there's a lot of companies' business. Like you were saying now, you know, there's the... Uh, the one side and there's others are challenges on either people that's needing and some people mm. that actually has it. And how can they have got get to contribute to you? Well, you know, how do they go about? Because obviously you guys also have needs. There's things that you need to supply, these sporting things that you need to get. How can somebody get hold of you regarding or what can they contribute? How do they go about contributing? I suppose there's no one size fits all in this. Um, I like to have conversations because I like to also know that the people that are providing resources, be it um, financial or be it actual in-kind donations, that they invested in what we want to do. Because we just want, we want an amazing world that's great for our youth. Um, So for me, there's not one size fits all. We have the ability to do the snap scans and the pay fast and the PayPal's and all of that. I would just love them to get in contact with us so that we can look at what the resources are that they have, mm, wow. um, match it with what it is that we need. And and also the reverse, because we may be able to open up some doors that they never thought mm. um, could be opened up by an NGO. Mm, we yeah. can open up conversations in these spaces as well. And so they may benefit more from us than than us from them. Yeah. Mm. So I just want to, I mean, I don't mind. They can, I'll give you my mobile number um, <laughs> on air and people can WhatsApp and, and it will filter through uh, to our emails and all of that. And, and we'll be in contact with these people. But I, I'd really love to have conversations with people yeah. to show them the possibilities. That's oh, what we want out of this. We want to bridge those gaps. Oh, yes. Yeah. Ellie, and if people want to find out more, they just go to splaysportsforlife.org.za. That would be the website. 
Yes, and it's place four, four with the number, number four. four. The number, the num the numeral. All four right, life. so so play sports for live dot org dot and then uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, they but they can get the details there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they can fill in a contact sheet and they can get the yeah. details there as Excellent. well. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. So. Sure. Rona. That was brilliant. Yeah. Oh. We, we haven't said bye to you yet. Don't we go anywhere. We haven't said bye yet. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. So uh, play sports for life. I know you would have seen it there on the on the, the bottom of the screen as well. So uh, very, very easy. Play sports for life.org.za. And for those that want to contribute, go to the website and then you can see yeah. how you can channel, um, basically contribute towards this. And then also have a chat with Ali. I mean, I Definitely. think that will be the best thing. I, we enjoy chatting yeah. with Ali. So <laughs> if just, not, why not? <laughs> yeah, just go have a chat. I That's love what, a good coffee, guys. There we go. <laughs> So, you so Ali, right, we need. Yeah, I was gonna you say. You would fit in right here into this yes, club. I, I think we all need to meet Ali. You would <laughs> there's some, right here there's some the big club. conversations we'll be having. Don't you worry. Yeah, <laughs> Ali, that is where we're gonna leave our conversation today. But firstly, uh, just from our side, uh, well done on the well amazing done. work you have done, and oh, yeah. uh, please keep inspiring everybody. And when I say everybody, is because uh, your work. Uh, really inspires everybody, regardless of age. Although you you work with certain people, but just keep 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 doing what you're doing, and, and long may it continue. And may you just grow from strength to strength with the amazing things you do. But before we let you go, you've got to have a final thought on all of this. And I also, yeah, any final thoughts? Let me ask you that first. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I suppose I, I'm just so grateful. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to have this conversation with you guys, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm grateful that that you that you kind of can see what it is that we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to meet up with like-minded people. Um, I was saying, you know, there's a lot of in Cape Town specifically. There's a lot of roads that divide us. So it's the M3, it's the M5, it's Puerto Road, it divides us. <laughs> um, if we just intentionally want to make a difference, we can cross those roads and we can cross those roads together and we can cross it from either side. Mm. Um, and so I just want to, I just want to like shout out to everyone and say, cross the roads. You don't have to do it alone. Mm. We'll do it with you. Yeah. I'll do it with you. Cross the road and make a difference. Wow. Happy days, Ellie it's Dixon. Definitely. Do you have any questions for Rhoda before no, no, I say no. bye? For Dougal, not Rhoda. You I'm can ask no me answers. when we're going to have coffee years. That's our answer. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? That phone call's coming. We not when it's going to happen. <laughs> oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure talking absolute, to you today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Have a little week. Oh, yeah. We most certainly will. Thank you. And Same don't to forget, you. don't be Jaja Rach, eh? <laughs> Bye. Bye, Ellie. Bye, Ellie. Thanks a million. <laughs> so that is Ellie Dixon, everybody, that joined us here this morning on a, a Mahala Monday. And, of course, we spoke about game changes. There's amazing thing that oh, is uh, going on. And, of, of course, uh, play sports for life, which is also... Uh, exemplary. But Rhoda, these, these are how, how great things often happen, and I didn't mention it. You mm. know, when sometimes, uh, you know, when, whenever they it's like a rugby thing. You know what I mean? There's a scrum, you can't get past the defense, and oh, yeah. you get all these tackles coming and challenges, mm. and you see a little gap, and then once the gap is there behind the gap, Ta-da, there you go and score. And this is sort of what this is. You this know is what I mean? The challenges of life, and you keep going. Keep and, going. And then together you do, you do amazing things. You can do things. amazing things, and, and yeah. This is, and this is really what they've been doing. Yeah. And this is, I mean, looking at Ali and where she's come from and traveling around the world at mm. the end of the day, COVID eats you, and look at the brilliant work she's doing right now. Yeah. And you know what, I, I, Ali, I just think this is exactly what was your path, and because of your passion that yeah. you have, this is the path that you were set out to be. Exactly. Sorry. COVID. And Good and bad, but this is yeah. one of the good. <laughs> and more especially, I mean, you know what? This program creates a, a leaders. Oh, yeah. But also independent thinkers. So really making sure that we, we go forward. And that and that is really the essence of all of this. You've oh, got to yeah. invest in the youth and invest in them properly. Don't just, you know what? We, we, we've got to stop walk, uh, doing the talk. Uh, mm. We've got to do it. This organization does it, and they do it exemplary. So we all yeah. got to join that plight. That, 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 is, that is the bottom line. That's, That's all I've got to say. I say it because 
unlike your example, I don't have laryngitis. I can still say it. Yesterday <laughs> was Father's Day. I achieved 30 month success. So there we go. <laughs> He's got his remote. Guys, thank you for joining us. It was fabulous having you here. And you know what? It was a brilliant topic. So if there's any questions, you know, feel free to either contact us or contact Ali for any information. And remember, we've got a lot of other shows that we have done. Go and have a look at it on our YouTube channel, Nikkei Productions, where you'll be able to see all these shows. Yeah, and it is always fun here at Nikkei Productions. Oh, yeah. And uh, not just fun, it's always serious. And uh, you can also do amazing things. And just to remind you, it is June. It is the Youth Month. And of course, if you make a contribution to the Cape Town Multi-Service Center of 1,500 Rand at least, we at Mala Monday will give you a show. <laughs> you get to talk to Rhoda. And to go. <laughs> I will actually pay double for that. <laughs> So there you go. And of course, you can simply contact us at DK Productions if you need more information. But that is it for this ep edition and this episode of Mahala Monday. Once again, thank you very much to Ellie Dixon for being here. And once again, thank you for you for being here. And like Rhoda said, you've got to share. Yes. Share, Rhoda. Share. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. Share. Until next time. Bye. Bye.